this contest have been at the center of some of the discussion and uh, some of the emotion that has bubbled over in this one. And now, without Urso, it goes back to the top of the order. Here's Long and company trying to turn their attention back to a baseball game that must be won here in the ninth. Yeah, that's such a huge call. You know, one of the biggest indicators of your ability to score runs is getting the leadoff hitter on. And that could have gone from strike three to ball four real fast, and it's a completely different outlook in this top of the ninth. Well, and back to the point that we started the inning with, that at before Virginia Tech has a chance potentially to win the yeah, game. Yeah, you're hoping Miami, if you're on a Miami bench, one of these next two guys got to get on to give Cuve a chance to, to give us a lead. And fouled off again by Long here. Things here in this ninth frame. A lot of frustration from both sides, a lot of missed opportunities out there. There have been ducks on the pond for both teams, but we saw the stat earlier. In feaster, famine, home run, strikeout type performances from a number of these teams. You saw the, the squeeze play where Virginia Tech tried to take the lead in the eighth. And now here's a strikeout followed by a pop-up foul that they won't be able to hang on to. First base side. Ebel was dancing around trying to settle underneath it. In the end, it falls harmlessly to the turf and the at-bat will continue for long. Man, that's added in the mitt. Just didn't quite squeeze it long enough to carry it all the way through the catch. Here's a one-two, and that's up around the helmet of Long. And he's now got to go fetch his equipment about a third of the way up the third base line. Just about everything across the last couple of innings in this key ACC battle. Got to see if cooler heads prevail. Most of the time, it's the two teams chirping each other. Tonight, it's been both teams chirping at the home plate umpire, Barry Chambers. But that was a pitch right there that little chin music, as the saying goes. Two, two is fouled off, another one coming. One of those nights that you so often hear coaches say the team that is able to remain within themselves and yeah. stay focused on the task at hand can find that ultimate advantage to come out on top. Who's it going to be in the opener? This isn't football or wrestling where you can just kind of grab the game and, and choke what you want out of it. you got to let the game come to you as a pitcher, as a hitter. Breaking ball that just stays off the plate away. I thought that was a good call. Ball was probably in the left-handed batter's box inside line right there. Good call by Barry Chambers to leave a ball a ball. Nine pitch at bat. And we just worked it to a 3-2 count. Here's a payoff pitch. Uh-oh. And this is hit well. And that is going to go into the Blacksburg night to give Miami the lead. Long takes advantage of second life in the ninth. Jacoby Long took exception to the 1-2 fastball up around his chin. Uh, gave a stare to Shoemaker. Still staring at him. A little bit of adrenaline from Jacoby Long. The fast twitch, speedy center fielder says, I'm going to take this thing into my own hands. Got a 3-2 elevated fastball. Give the Canes a lead. I'm going to take it. Ninth. I'm going to take it a step further than that, Bo. Go all the way back to the pop-up first base side foul territory. Yep. Had they squeezed it, he is retired. With second life, Jacoby Long. Pushes Miami back out front with a solo shot in the ninth. And look, you can see the reaction of Garrick Ebel over there at first base. He knows as much as he doesn't, you know, it's not going to, you know, it, it, it's in his mind. He knows he should have caught that ball. If he catches that ball, like you said, Jay, it's, it's this inning is completely different. We got two outs, nobody on. Just a tough situation for, for Garrick Ebel. 